What's up guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be discussing everything that we know so far about the DJI Spark. Now with all of the leaked information, the leaked pictures, and the leaked videos, we have a pretty good idea at what DJI is going to be releasing within the next couple of months when it comes to the Spark. There's been a lot of leaks going across different websites, different YouTube videos, etc, etc. I've even posted a few videos on the Spark, so in this video today I figured I would combine it all into one and talk about everything that we know so far. The first thing that I want to address are the people saying that the Spark is fake. Now while DJI actually hasn't come out and said that they are releasing this drone or that they're even working on this drone, there have been a lot of people that have been doing some digging behind the scenes, getting some different pictures, videos, and even some other information. For example, the name Spark was trademarked by DJI within the category of drones and UAVs, which is short for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. This happened on the 9th of March, which was around this time last month. If you want to see a clearer version of the screenshot I have up on the screen, check out the link that I provided in the description. Some more proof that the Spark is truly being developed by DJI is shown on their developer domain. On this website, I believe they test certain pages before they actually go live to the public to make sure that everything works correctly. Under the consumer category sits all of DJI's current drones, as well as the Spark, which is a good hint at what is to come. Now as far as the Spark itself, let's discuss some of the different specs and information that has been found through photos and videos. First we have the dimensions which are 130 by 150 millimeters. This converts to about 5 by 6 inches, which is crazy small. To get a feel for how small this drone actually is, we have multiple photos of it next to other devices, such as the Mavic Pro, which is currently the smallest drone that DJI manufactures, the iPad Mini, which is probably one of the smallest tablets on the market, and a Samsung Galaxy. Because this drone is so small, that also means it will be fairly light. Just the shell alone is about 190 grams, not including the battery or the propellers. The weight of this drone is becoming a lot more important to many, especially Canadians, as drones under a certain weight do not have to be registered. I'm on the fence about the weight of the full package, being the shell, battery, and propellers. Considering a battery that weighs only 60 grams, adding up to 250 total, would not hold all that much power. For comparison, the Mavic Pro battery is roughly 240 grams. Now I know the Spark's battery will be newer than the Mavic's and does not need to provide as much power to the smaller motors, but the battery always seems to be the heaviest component of the drone. Again, I'm just spitballing here, but I'm not looking to get my hopes up. The next design feature I want to point out is the non-folding arms. Some people find this to be a deal breaker while others are indifferent due to the small size of the drone already. With such a small footprint, I don't think it will be that detrimental to have stiff arms. Now one thing that I do want to bring up is kind of this divide in the community or people looking at the Spark saying that it's either going to be an FPV racer or a selfie drone. Now we know that a drone this small isn't, you know, that capable of being a cinematic powerhouse like the Inspire 2 or the Phantom 4 Pro, uh, but at the end of the day, we're getting a nice small compact package that should be on the fairly inexpensive side or the cheaper side compared to some other drones out there and will deliver some pretty good results as far as video and photo quality is concerned. Now the reason that I'm bringing this up is because most race drones have stiff arms, just because stiff arms lead to less breakages, especially when flying at high speeds. Now with this little drone, I don't think you're going to be flying at high speeds, I don't think you're going to be flying at high altitudes, I think it's more designed for people who are a casual user of drones, I guess, someone who's just looking to take pictures here and there, take videos here and there, and again, isn't looking to shell out a bunch of money on a Mavic Pro or a Phantom. On the front of the drone we have a glass panel just above the camera that houses a single obstacle avoidance sensor as well as an IR sensor, giving us forward obstacle avoidance. Now in the future I would love to see something this small have 360 obstacle avoidance. I feel like just right now DJI is kind of working on shrinking those sensors down. Obviously the Phantom body is a little bit bigger than the Mavic and a lot bigger than the Spark, so it does have the obstacle avoidance in the back as well as on the sides, but I would love to see something like 360 obstacle avoidance be implemented into something like the Mavic body or even the Spark body eventually, obviously when technology catches up. Taking a look at the motors, we immediately notice that they are smaller than the Mavics, but still hold the same design style. This could mean a decrease in performance, but as some people have pointed out in my previous videos, the Spark is a smaller drone, meaning that it won't need the biggest motors to get good results. Another thing that I want to mention is the integration of the quick release system for the folding propellers. It's not that much of a surprise that we see them in the Spark, as many of the newer DJI drones come with this feature. 
As far as the battery specs are concerned, we are pretty much left in the dark as far as what to expect. We do know that it will be a removable battery, which is pretty much necessary on drones, especially when traveling. The biggest question I have here is charging. Sources are pointing to the Spark having the capability of charging when directly plugged into the wall, which is a first for DJI. I think this feature would be well adopted, especially by those always on the go. Another thing that I've mentioned in my previous videos is this connection just underneath of the drone. Rumors point towards a docking system coming with the Spark, but this could also always just be a prototype. There are plenty of other specs about the battery that we don't know yet, such as the capacity, the milliamp hours, and also the flight time. A lot of people are speculating around 15 minutes, which I guess does make sense. I mean, it is a smaller battery, it is a smaller drone, and a lot of the other drones that fit this nano drone category, like the Unique Breeze, do have a battery life or a flight time of around 15 minutes. On the bottom of the drone, we get two VPS sensors, as well as a downwards camera to aid the drone in keeping its position. This is nothing too special, in fact, I wasn't all that surprised when I saw the pictures of the bottom of the Spark. I would expect the same stability as a higher-end DJI drone, like a Phantom Series drone, maybe a Phantom 4, but obviously not in strong gusts of winds due to the size of the Spark. It seems that moving forward from here, VPS sensors will be coming on all of DJI's drones and it is a big help as I was flying my friend's Phantom 2 and that thing was basically flying everywhere, especially with high gusts of winds, it's super hard to just fly, get smooth shots and even land. The two ports that we will be getting on the Spark are a micro SD card slot for storing photos and videos and a micro USB port for firmware updates. When it comes to DJI's drones, I guess that this is fairly typical, but I was kind of hoping that they would make the switch to USB Type-C, but I guess we will have to wait just a little bit longer for that. Regarding the lighting on the Spark, I think that they look pretty badass. We have small light rings underneath of the propellers that look very bright. One complaint that I have with the Mavic is the placement of the lights, as I feel they are very dim and hard to see, especially when you're flying when it's just a little bit dark outside. But with the Spark, it seems that you'll have no problem as these are facing towards the ground and look fairly bright. Now for the big topic, that is the camera and gimbal system. Starting off with the camera, we will be able to shoot in 4K with the Spark. This was confirmed by a leaked screenshot of the DJI GO application while hooked up to the Spark itself. We can also shoot in 60fps at 1080p for that smooth slow motion video. Although many were expecting a 4K camera, considering it really is working its way to being a standard in today's technology, it always is good to have some sort of confirmation. As far as other specs about the camera, such as the sensor size, all of this little stuff is still unknown. As far as the gimbal is concerned, I keep leaning back and forth between whether it's going to be a 2 or 3 axis gimbal. Looking at the gimbal and camera piece by themselves, it clearly looks like a 2 axis gimbal due to the lack of yaw or vertical stabilization. I stood by the picture evidence for a good amount of time and then was immediately proved wrong the next day by a video uploaded to YouTube showing the actual flight using the Spark. This is a video I haven't touched on during my Spark previews, but it looks pretty damn solid, like a 3-axis gimbal solid. After doing some digging, I found rumors saying that the camera itself actually moves itself back and forth to act as a third axis for stabilization. This actually makes a lot of sense due to the rather large camera cutout, giving it a lot of space and a lot of freedom to go back and forth, compensating for any quick yaw or vertical movements. Now the final thing I want to mention are the available colors and the color scheme for the Spark. We have this base gray color that resembles the Mavic's body, and then we have our choice between a black or a white top shell. I personally think that the black looks the best, but the white does a great job at matching the Phantom 4 and the Phantom 4 Pro. A lot of people seem to think that this design is ugly, but I for one think it looks pretty cool. These are only prototypes after all, and the design could be changed for the final product, so we will have to wait and see just what DJI reveals to us. So guys, that about wraps up all the information that we have so far on the Spark. It might have been a repeat from some of the other videos that you've seen, but I wanted to bring everything all together in one video and kind of list all the features that we can expect to see from the Spark. Now there is one thing I'm waiting on, and it's probably like that last missing puzzle piece, and that is how we're actually going to control the damn thing. I mean, we know that with the Mavic, we can use either our smartphone or a remote controller, and I would kind of expect the same for the Spark, but it is kind of worrying me that we haven't seen any leaked pictures of the remote controller yet, 
and I really do hate having to fly something with my smartphone as I can't get the most precision with the touch screen. With that being said, I'll try to keep all of you updated as far as the rumors and leaks go regarding the Spark. Now this weekend has been kind of slow, it's kind of the reason I'm making this video. I wanted to round all of the rumors and leaks together into one video. Earlier in the week, it seemed like every single day we were getting a brand new picture or some brand new video, but again, this weekend has been pretty slow. So I kind of hope it starts picking up again and we start seeing some pictures of the remote controller, fingers crossed. Uh, so guys, anyway, this video is coming to an end. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also, leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think of the Spark. Sometimes people's opinions do change and I know a lot of people kind of hate this drone. I really don't know why, uh, but I do see a lot of negative comments regarding it. So guys, anyway, as I said, this video is coming to an end and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.